Before January 2011, my life was very normal until this hit me like a bolt out of the blue. I decided to do a breast exam and I just found a big old lump. The very next day I got a diagnostic mammogram and I was told on the spot the words that nobody wants to hear, which is that I had breast cancer. I just went numb. My children were three and six years old. I didn't know if I was going to live or not. I had a kind of cancer called HER2 positive, and that meant that I'd have to have chemotherapy. The first thing I asked was, am I going to lose my hair? And they said yes. I sat down to tell my daughter that I was going to lose my hair. She lived in a world of Disney princesses, and she said, but mummy, if you lose your hair, you're going to look ugly, babyish, and stupid. When I first talked to my mum, she told me that there was this thing they do in England where they put bags of ice on their head and they call it cold cap therapy. And so I just got in front of the computer and up popped this website, Penguin Cold Caps. I decided it was definitely worth a try. I did experience many of the side effects of chemo, but it made such a huge difference for me not to have to go through that trauma of the hair falling out. And for me, to be able to look normal and have people come up to me and say, you look great, you don't look sick. And the reason why I didn't look sick is because I wasn't losing my hair. When you get diagnosed, you lose control of everything. You don't get to decide whether or not you're gonna live or die. What was so important with being able to save my hair was the empowerment that I got to have control over something. Let's please welcome Trisha, who's here in our audience, as well as oncologist Dr. Lawrence Pirro. And again, Trisha, thank you for sharing your story. But first, before anything else, how are you doing? It's been a long, hard slog. It was a two-year journey, but today I'm cancer-free and doing great. Talk to us a little bit about the journey of chemo, radiation, because it's truly a journey, not always a pleasant one. It's absolutely a journey. I mean, first of all, chemotherapy is infused usually into your arm. There's some forms by mouth, but usually infused into your arm. It circulates throughout the body, and it kills a lot of the dividing cells. So on the good side, the, the tumors have a lot of dividing cells, so it kills the tumor. But on the bad side, it often kills other dividing cells that are normal. For example, in your mouth, when your lining of your mouth is being regenerated, it kills those cells, and it makes mouth sores and ulcers. In your bowel, it can cause diarrhea and erosions in that area. And of course, on your head, where you have hair follicles and you have hair growing, it can also kill hair. When you have diarrhea or you have nausea, these are kind of private and personal things, you know about it, everyone else doesn't necessarily, but when you lose your hair, everyone knows that something's going on. And for some people, the, the, uh, the process of getting chemotherapy, they're, they're a warrior, they want to fight everything, and, and they, their visuality is a, a being a fighter, and so they may want to really do this. There are other people who want to fight in other ways, and it may not be important to them, and, and I think we don't want to represent that for all people you should do this, because it isn't for some people. You should do what's right for you, what's pure and authentic to you. But if hair is important to you as it is to most of us, and, uh, and men become more sympathetic to this as the years go on, um, you know, it's a big part of your identity, and going through chemotherapy without hair can be challenging. So this is what one of these things looks like. This is, a, this is an example of one of the penguin cold caps, and you can see it kind of wraps all around your scalp. Now, this isn't a new technology. You know, we, we did a lot of this in the 1980s. Uh, but stepped away from it for, for a couple of reasons. One, it, it wasn't as effective because of some different technologies that existed then. Uh, and the second reason is that um, cancer at that time was a little bit more of a you treat it and you get cured or you don't get cured and you die. But today, cancer is a chronic illness. I mean, we definitely cure a lot of people, and even people we don't cure may live long, long periods of time with cancer. So a focus on quality of life mm -hmm. is completely different today than it was in the <clears throat> 1980s. And I think that's why there's renewed interest in a quality of life measure like keeping your hair. Can you show us how this would even work? Yes, I want to do that. I think the important thing to see is that this particular technology, as opposed to some older ones, this covers the head completely, see, and it molds to any shape head, gets right up against the hair follicles and the scalp, and when it's, then when it's which frozen to minus 32 degrees, it's really cooling the entire scalp. And that's put on about 50 minutes before the chemotherapy is applied. Now here's a little demo we have here. Um, I feel like uh, you know I'm back in my chemistry lab here when I was in high school. But this is, this is an example of, of blood flow to the, to the brain, to the scalp. 
right? And so if you have a wide open blood vessel, if you give some chemotherapy, and I'm gonna to try to not spill this on myself or anybody else, right? And you can see now the chemotherapy can go widely up to the scalp. Now the idea is if you freeze the blood vessel so that it, it uh, contracts and constricts down, right? And putting this clip on is a nice mechanical image of constriction, and then we pour in some. The point is, is that in the freezing, you've reduced the amount yep. that goes down, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not that it stops it completely. It reduces the amount that goes down. So now, less of the chemo gets to the hair follicle. Less of the chemo it. gets to the hair yeah. follicle. But there is a second part of the mechanism that is important as well. And that is that by freezing the hair follicle, you take the metabolism of the hair follicle down. Just like if we go and stand in a freezer for a period of time, all of your cells slow their metabolism because they need to preserve the energy for other more important functions like your heart beating. And so you, you reduce the metabolism, and whatever of that chemotherapy does get through, less is taken up by the hair follicle, so there's less damage to the hair and less loss. What I love is that cold therapy is finding so many applications. And you said this is a new technology, but now cold therapy is being used for so many things. It's always been used for organ transplantation, but after people have cardiac arrest, this is a way to save tissues and I'm just so glad that this worked for you because you have a beautiful set of hair. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you really do. <laughs>